Welcome to the Ultimate Beginner Quilt Series by Fat Quarter Shop. In this series, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a quilt all the way from the start to the finish. This series is sponsored by Moda Fabrics and Eversung Sewing Machines. I'm gonna be giving you lots of tips and we're gonna be building our first quilt together. In this video, we will be working on block five, which is an hourglass four patch block. So we're getting a little bit more complicated and we're gonna be working with hourglass blocks and we're making them bigger and trimming them down. We're gonna talk about using leaders and enders, pinning and working on the bias. So let's get started. So to make this pattern, you've gotta cut seven and a half inches square, but our ruler is only six and a half inches wide. So I'm gonna show you how you can make that work with your ruler. You'll always wanna cut with your ruler, but if you need to see if something is seven and a half, you can use the mat. You're just gonna to wanna to use your ruler to actually do the cutting. So first thing you're gonna do is look at your pattern and you're gonna see that you're gonna cut a pink and green square seven and a half inches and a blue and yellow square seven and a half inches. And from there, you're gonna cut all of them on the diagonal twice that is gonna give you a total of 16 triangles. Now we're gonna start cutting, and we have used a lot of these pieces of our fat quarters in previous blocks. So we are going to just use the sections that are left. So I'm gonna start with my biggest piece on the bottom. So the one that I haven't cut from is the yellow. I'll put my next biggest piece. I'm just going to line up like a corner where I've got a nice corner where I can see all the sides and we're just gonna cut a seven and a half inch square. So you just move the fabric however will fit. And if you want, you could use the guide to see you need it to be about this big. So we've got this and now we need to cut four seven and a half inch squares. You wanna make sure everything is pressed nice and flat and we're going to be using the six and a half inch ruler, but we need it to be seven and a half. So we're going to start a little bit up. So we've got, this is six and a half. So we've got another inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut the top to the side, pull that out of the way a tiny bit, cut the next piece move my ruler down, keep it flush with what you've already cut, and you've cut that little section, and you've cut that little section off. So we know we've got seven and a half. So you just check this seam right here to make sure that this is straight and this is straight and it looks straight. So we're going to turn the ruler, line up the bottom, and seven and a half is here. So we'll cut here, move your ruler up, and keep cutting. And then we will turn without moving anything and cut another seven and a half. And here I'm making sure the top is straight. This line is straight. And then we're gonna pull this down. And this block, we have actually made everything where you cut it a slightly bigger so that you can trim down. So if it's not 100% perfect, you're okay. And from here, before I move the fabrics, I want to cut on the diagonal twice which means we're cutting on the bias. So you will just put your ruler, you wanna make sure the very tip is here and the very tip is here, that's super important. And you'll cut. Move your ruler where you don't move the fabric and do the same thing on the other direction without moving your fabric. You've got the tip and the tip and it, it helps if you put your finger there because you can feel if it's in the right spot. So now we have four triangles from each square. I'm gonna set them 
by their letter and label them. And then we're gonna get our design board out and start organizing our fabrics. So we've got our design board out and I'm gonna follow my pattern closely and just lay out all of my blocks to start. It's always good to just get everything laid out, triple check before you start pinning. And I'll separate them a little bit so I can tell the difference. And sometimes when you're laying them out, maybe on the first try, maybe they won't come out right. That's why you're just gonna double check. And that's why these design boards really help when you're sewing because your fabric won't move when you go to your sewing table. So here's this. And it looks like I have them all laid out. So when I said you're cutting on the bias, that means you're cutting on the diagonal of the fabric. And if you look at this piece of fabric, if you stretch it, it bends. And this side also bends. So that means it's wavy and in the machine, it can really get distorted. So you have to be really careful when you're working with bias edges. Now this outside edge is not biased and does not stretch. So all of these inside cuts are biased. So you just wanna be really gentle. And anytime you're working with bias edges, I would always pin. Now I always pin no matter what, but with bias edges, you definitely have to. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to lay my fabrics on top of each other. So you'll see that I'm gonna sew down this edge for this one. For this one, I'm gonna sew down this edge. Just keep going, just get them all laid out and then we're gonna pin them and keep them in place and we can change chain sew with a leader and an ender. So first thing we're gonna do is pin at both ends and again, make sure everything is lined up exactly. Line up your tip and I'm gonna pin once in the center. So since I have pre-starched my fabrics, like we talked about in one of our very first videos in the Ultimate Beginner Series, this will not stretch as much. It'll keep your fabric a little bit stiffer, which makes bias easier to work with. So we're gonna just get all of these pins in and we're gonna go to the sewing machine. So now I've got everything pinned and I'm gonna go to the sewing machine. So I'm gonna start with a leader and an ender. That is basically just a leftover scrap that you feed under your sewing machine and just stitch on it. That's gonna give you a firm anchor before you start stitching. And we're gonna leave that there. Now I'm gonna take my pieces and you can either start at the 90 degree angle or at the triangle tip. For a beginner, I would always start on the 90 degree angle because it's easier to feed in the machine and less likely to distort at this intersection. So we're just gonna start all of these right at that 90 degree angle and stitch with a quarter inch seam.
we're gonna leave a little gap we're not gonna cut our thread we're just gonna keep going that is called chain piecing it keeps all your fabrics together it's easier and it saves thread so we're just gonna keep going starting at that 90 degree angle Again, when you're sewing, you want to make sure your fabrics stay lined up so if they get misaligned and one fabric overlaps the other, just reposition it. To end, we're going to take another scrap of fabric and just place it. This is going to help you with threads later. It'll be nice and secure when you start your next stitches. So you're just going to leave that in there and we'll cut all of our pieces apart and go iron. And the, the leader that we started with, which is the scrap that we'll get to at the very end, I'm going to keep that and use that again and we'll just sew over it a bunch of times and it helps you keep the thread in your machine and it is just a great sewing tool. So we're just gonna keep this and we can use this again probably 20 or 30 times and we can just start and end with a leader and ender. When you're looking at your pattern, you will see arrows that have arrows points on each end and that means we're gonna be pressing these open. So if you ever see that in a pattern, that's what it means. So we are going to first take, take our units, just lie them flat, and we're gonna set the seam by pressing down. Now to press open, I like to press to one side, stop, come back, and then press open. So I will just press like normal where I finger press to one side and press. I will keep stacking all of these on top of each other because when I do that, the bottom ones get set even more and they're nice and flat. So I'll do all eight and then I will press open after that. The reason I don't press open right after is because you can burn your fingers. Um, and I learned that a few too many times. So just set your seam, finger press to any side, doesn't matter. Really nice and flat.
just lay them nice and flat. So now that I have them all pressed to one side, I'm gonna press them open. So I'll just turn them over, bring it back, press open with your fingers, put the very tip of your iron right on the edge and just guide your iron. Make sure you don't rock and then I'll just move these out of the way as I go. But finger pressing to get that open is really great. Gets it nice and flat. Just make sure you get your finger out of the way of the tip of the iron because I've burned myself before quite a bit and you might also burn yourself when you start but you will get used to it. And so you can see on this one, I've got a little fold right here that's kind of flipping open and I wanna get that flat because if, if that's not fixed, it will wrinkle on the front. So fix that, press open, glide your iron. And again, these are bias edges, which is why I'm not rocking my iron. I know I keep saying that in every video, but it's so important to not rock your iron. And I let it sit maybe two to three seconds. I only press from the back. I don't go back and press from the front, but if you would like to, you definitely can. And pressing open does take a little bit more time, but it's good to know how to do it. So again, here you can see that it's wrinkled a little bit. I'm gonna make it flat and then press it open. Since you're pressing your seams open, the seams can be weaker. So you might want to stitch with a slightly lower stitch length, like a 1.75, um, or I stitch with just a 2.0. If you see anything coming apart, you'll want to re-stitch it, but you can see that it's nice and sturdy. So I've got them all pressed. I'm gonna bring my design board on, and I'm gonna, again, follow my pattern. And I'm just gonna lie, lay everything out. So the fabrics will be catty corner to each other. So you're gonna put your two units together and make the green touch the green and the yellow touch the yellow. So if you put it right here, your seams would not nest. If you put it right together, they will nest. Nesting just means that you're gonna get a really nice intersection. And so we're gonna put a pin right there. And if you're a beginner, you can put two pins. You can put one on the left and one on the right. And we're gonna pin at the very end. Pin at the other end and you'll see that you just have to get those points together. And of course, we're gonna pin in each intersection and we're gonna do that on all four of our units. And if you feel like your fabric is moving around too much, you can always add more pen. So let's get everything pinned and we will go to our sewing machine.
And here, if you're feeling like your seams are weak or you need to lower your stitch length, you can definitely do that. So we have our ender that we've left on there and we're just gonna start stitching. Using a quarter inch seam. And I'm gonna leave the pin in until the last possible moment on this. And I can see that there's a little bit of green sticking out here and I want the yellow to go to the right a little bit. So I'm just gonna manipulate the fabric with my finger to get that to line up. When I get to the end of one unit and I go to the other, I'm going to lift this presser foot and put it back down to get the fabric under my foot. going to end with an ender but before I go back to iron I'm going to check all of my intersections to see if my points match before I go iron so I'll cut them all apart save this little leader for later and then I'm gonna look and that looks nice we're gonna check all these seams. That looked perfect. That looks perfect. And that one looks great. But we're gonna pretend that one of these doesn't match. We're just gonna pretend that this one doesn't match. To fix it, what you will do is take your seam ripper. We're only gonna seam rip this little section right here. So what I like to do is just seam rip on one side every four or five stitches, I'm gonna show you a little shortcut of how to seam rip. And again, only this little center. You don't need to do the ends. So you're just gonna seam rip every couple of stitches. Go to the other side and seam rip on each end. And then you can pull this whole thread out. It's gonna come right out. It's gonna just come right out on the other side. And then you just go to the other side, get your little threads off, and then to fix your seam, just reposition your fabric right in that intersection, repin, and instead of starting at the end, you can start at that intersection first. So you'll have to trim your threads before you do that. And then we're going to just start in that very intersection.
stitch all the way over, you're going to go a little bit past your previous stitches. And then we're going to look, and now it's perfect. So we will turn it the other direction and sew over it. And by starting in the center, you're more likely to get a better result than if you start on the end. So now we have all of these units together. We're halfway done with our block. You'll set your seam. Setting your seam just locks your stitches in place and makes it nice and flat. And then we'll press to one side. Any side, it doesn't matter because we're gonna press open later. So I like to get it really nice and flat and put the edge of my iron right on there. We're doing the same thing on all four. And then we will press open. Now we'll turn them over and we're gonna press this open also. So you will just use your finger, press it open, and then just with the tip of your iron, just go down the edge. And you want the back to look nice and flat with everything flat. You don't want anything folded, folded over. Because if something is folded over in the back, sometimes it can show through to the front. Now you can take your blocks and just make sure they're nice and flat. If you feel like they're not flat, you can press them again before we go to the next step. So here we're gonna take our blocks and we're gonna be trimming them down. So we made our pattern where you make your hourglass units slightly bigger and trim them down because that's gonna give you more accurate results. So we're gonna be trimming to six and a half inches, which is great because our ruler is six and a half inches. So here's our first unit. On rulers, there is generally a 45 degree angle on one of the corners. This is a Creative Grids ruler, so there's one on this corner. And you're gonna wanna check that this edge of the ruler matches the edge, this point. This one matches this point. That your line is on here. And you can see that this doesn't match exactly, so I'm just gonna pull this fabric so that it makes a point. So I've pulled that. This matches the point. So all of my six and a half inch match my points. And on Creative Grids, the best thing about their rulers is that the very center always has a white line. So that white line is 3.25 going straight in. So again, meets the diagonals and the center. So what I like to do is cut two sides at a time. I'm gonna cut this side and this side. Then I will flip it. Again, we're gonna line up at the six and a half inches, and you can see it says six and a half right here. So we line up the six and a half inch line, the intersection, this intersection, it needs to move over a little bit, so I'll just move that a little bit, and then cut. And that is coming out to a perfect six and a half inches and you can see all of my points 
are at the intersection and the back is nice and flat. I'm gonna keep doing that on all of my units. So the first thing again is this diagonal line, the center white line, each intersection cut. And sometimes the first time you put it down, it will line up. Sometimes it won't. It's okay to pull your fabric just a tad to make it fit. And so when I turn it, I line up the six and a half point, point, line, white line, which is the center. And we'll do the last two. So we're going to bring on our design board and we're going to lay down our pattern and follow the block placement. And this block can get a little tricky. So we've got our pinks going this direction and our greens going this direction. But if you turn it, that is not correct because the greens are going this direction. Now in the end, is it going to be the end of the world if you put it in the wrong place? No. Definitely not. Um, but if we're gonna do it according to the pattern, this is how it looks. And what we're gonna do is pin before we go to the sewing machine. And with this, it's super important to pin. You can't do this without pinning because you've got all these intersections. So we're gonna put our fabrics right sides together. And we're going to make sure that these two intersections meet up. So the very center of each meet, they will nest. You can kind of feel it. You'll pin in that intersection. We're gonna to go to the other intersection. We'll pin in this intersection. And here you'll be sewing on the straight grain, which is really nice because it's easier to sew. It won't stretch. So that's good. We've got all the bias out of the way. And again, we're gonna do this one. At the beginning and the end. We're gonna to go to our sewing machine, keep this in order, and we're just gonna go straight down this line and we're gonna keep this chain piece so when we come back and iron, they stay together and then you don't really have to lay it out anymore. So you're starting with a leader. You're gonna bring your block. And this time I'm not gonna remove my pen. I'm gonna leave it in and start stitching. Right before I get to it, then I'll pull it out. So it's more likely to stay in place. And again, I'm 
just keeping my pin in until I get right to it. Take a couple of stitches in between. Lift your foot to be able to put your fabric underneath. Start stitching and just pull the, sti pull the pin out right at the end. scrap and that's going to be my ender. I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to look before we go iron at my points. So I'm going to see that that is a good intersection. This one's good. This is good and this is good and this one is not looking as perfect. So I'm going to leave everything chain piece together and I'm going to show you how you fix this. So that's like it maybe an eighth of an inch off. And um, it's totally up to you if you want to fix that. I do, so I'm going to do the same thing where I just unpick. I'm going to repin that. sew it one more time. You can choose to be 100% accurate or less accurate, whatever your preference is. And that looks much better, so let's go iron. So I have my pieces together. I've still got this chain together so I don't have to double check my work or anything. And this time, we're going to set our seams and press toward the green. So I'm going to press this one toward the green. And then we're going to put these together. So the first thing I'll do is I'll do my ends. So I'll pin each of my ends. I'm gonna clip my little chain apart. And I'm gonna do poke a pin. This is like my little thing that I do. Okay, so I'm gonna take a pin and I'm gonna poke it in the very intersection where that stitch is. So I'm gonna poke it through, and when I open it, it's right in the intersection where it meets. I'm gonna push that right through the next intersection so everything should be lined up. I'm gonna leave this pin in there, and I'm gonna put a pin on the left and the right and hope that my seams stay, to stay together. And I do poke a pin anytime I've got a lot of seams that are going together. So now I can take this out, put two more pins in the center, and we've got one last seam for this block. And this block is getting a little bit more advanced, but just take your time. If you get a little bit frustrated, just walk away from your sewing machine and come back an hour later and you'll be ready to go. So again, we're just gonna start stitching and then remove your pins as you go. So you can see the, a little bit of yellow is sneaking out under that blue, so I'm gonna put my hand under, pull that yellow back, and keep stitching, just to keep it straighter. I'm keeping my pins in. When I get there to the pin, I'm gonna lift my foot just a little bit to keep it going, because I don't want that pin to get out of spot so that my intersection stays in place and we're just going to keep going. Okay. 
and before we go back, we're gonna just look. And oh, I'm so proud, all of my little intersections meet perfectly. So we can just iron our block. So we're on our final seam. Just set that seam. You can really go to any side at this point. You've got a lot of intersections though, and this can get really bulky. So really finger pressing this down will help you get it nice and flat and then put the iron edge on it. And then we can trim our block little slivers off in our next step. Now that we have our block done, I wanna show you something. You're gonna notice that all of these intersections are a quarter inch in and on your diagram in the quilt pattern, you're not gonna see those quarter inches. And that is because we just show your finished block, just like the center. So this is finished. So you're just not gonna see those edges. Don't let that confuse you. Those are just your quarter inch seam allowance. And most patterns are written that way where you don't see your seam allowance. So you're just gonna lay your ruler right on the edge and you will see that your quarter inch seam is right there. It should touch right there. And you're gonna trim just the slivers off. You do not have to do this step. This is just something that I like to do so that I can get any of the little raggedy threads off. And on this one, luckily I don't have very much, but again, quarter inch trim. And you can also line up a ruler on the center. So this one is really accurate. And you're seeing that I'm not trimming very much off. And that's really because we made these larger and trimmed them down, which is gonna give you a more accurate result. I hope you have loved block five. I can't wait to see your blocks. I would love for you to tell me in the comments if you like using leaders and enders and what you think of that so that I can know kind of what you're thinking and join me next week for block six. And of course, subscribe to the Fat Quarter Shop YouTube channel and I'll see you next week.